today is going to be an amazing day. If we haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet, my name is Daniel. My beautiful redhead that was up here a moment ago is my wife, Jackie, alongside of our, and every, every time, if I say Jackie's dad, then I, yee, yee, like, so we have the privilege alongside of our amazing leadership team of serving and leading this incredible church, and Hope City has been an amazing church since day one and seven years. Y'all, next month, we celebrate our eighth year anniversary as a church. You can make better, more noise than that. That's amazing. Eight premium years, and you know, eight means new beginnings. Oh, that fires me up. If you're listening and you read the word, Isaiah 43, 19 says God is doing a new thing, and it's already begun. Do you not see it? And I love, and I have so much anticipation and expectation for what God is about to do as we roll into next year, year number eight. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, I've got big expectation. Come on, I've got huge expectation. So this weekend is Vision Weekend. Now, historically and statistically, a Vision Weekend is where we talk about who we are, what we're about. And the truth is, if you attend Hope City, now we've got a lot of new family in the room, so I'm going to do some recaps. But... If you attend Hope City or you've been listening to what God has been doing all throughout this year specifically, you'll know the vision. It just oozes from everybody that's on the team and that is a part of what God is doing here. You know we're passionate about loving God, loving people, and changing the world. Now, those are kind of sticky statements, but then we can actually practically apply those. We want you to know God, go deeper in your relationship with Jesus. We want you to find freedom so that whatever's trying to hold you captive and keep you locked down that you can get free from. We want you to discover your purpose because we believe that everybody has a plan, a purpose, and a call handwritten by God himself for your life. And then we want you to ultimately make a difference. So those are some of the snapshots of who we are. But as I was praying about Vision Weekend, I'm going to give a little bit of a fresh wind behind our sails as we close out today and close out 2022 strong and step into 23. But I I really felt strong from the Holy Spirit that the goal this weekend is for you to help see God's vision for your own life. Because I've said it before, and I, I pray that it doesn't just fall on calluses or flippancy, but God has a ridiculous plan for your life. A phenomenal plan. You can read Jeremiah 29, 11. He has a hope and a future, but there are people's lives connected to your destiny. God has a word and season connected to your lips. He has healing that he's placed in your hands. And I want you this weekend to lean in because I believe that God is about to unlock a fresh perspective on vision Taking down notes, you can write this down. I encourage you, if you're new to Hope City, I'll say this stat. Statistically, if you're here only, you retain 5% of what you hear. That's it, just 5%. It's not a lot, but it's okay. It's a a little bit. But if you take down notes in real time, it goes up to 35%, substantially better. If you take down notes and then go back and apply them, it goes up to 90 to 95% retention rate. Elbow the person next to you and say, don't stop growing. Come on, let them know. Say, don't stop growing. So take down those. Look at the person on your other side and say, can I borrow an eyeliner? Like, I just need to, I need to write something down. Faith and vision actually work together. Vision is based on what we can imagine to become possible, based on our own thoughts and even capacity. But faith is based on what God has promised to do. It is based on who God is and what his power alone can accomplish. So this weekend, as we're talking about vision, there's a few different parallels that I want to walk through, and then ultimately we're going to come back to a place where we're talking about God's vision. But when you don't have vision for your life, you end up just kind of going through the motions. When you don't have vision for your life, you end up almost in a survival mode. And that survival mode, there's frustration and You can get bored, and you ultimately end up with some regrets in life. When you don't have vision, they say statistically, life just doesn't turn out the way you were hoping. I joked the other day, I went to HEB uh, to pick up one item, but I didn't go with a list. I joked, but I'm like, man, going to HEB without a list is like walking around without vision. Intrigued by all these things that aren't attached to what you should have. And 
things that aren't connected to your assignment. You're like, chocolate dipped asparagus, I don't mind. Like, <laughs> you end up buying a bunch of extra stuff. How many of y'all stick to the list? Because you know if you don't, you're like, how did I spend 83 more dollars than expected? Seven different types of pickles. I don't know why. <laughs> or maybe you're walking around and maybe you, maybe you have the wrong vision. You strive to climb the ladder of success that was never again a part of your assignment. It's gonna step on somebody's toes here for a minute, but the longer you entertain what isn't from God, the longer you postpone what is. Yee, that was worth you showing up right there. The longer you entertain what isn't from God, the longer you postpone what is. Maybe you're here and you're like, Daniel, the truth is I have the right vision. It just seems like it's vague. I would call it vague vision. You know what you want, but you just don't know quite how to get there. I remember there was a season in my life where the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I was 18 years old. I was about to go play basketball internationally, point guard, which y'all know nothing about that. I was gonna go play basketball and I went to a worship night and I was standing there with some friends and the pastor said, there's somebody here and you don't know what direction is for your life. It's vague. And God's saying, get out of your comfort zone right now and come to the altar and he's gonna speak in your life. So I got out and I started walking. I'm the only one. It's like 2,000 people there. I'm like, oh, all y'all have it together? Everybody? <laughs> Oh, you hear God's voice audibly? Okay. And you know what was so significant is I felt the Spirit of God say, I've called you to, and he began to unfold and download this ministry call. It had been there since inception, since conception. It had been there since he said, I was faithful to complete the work I started in you, Daniel. But at 18 years old, I'm about to reveal a little bit more. I'm about to tell you a little bit more. And then afterwards, I was fired up. I'm telling all my friends about it. I called my mom and I said, hey, I think I'm gonna hold off on going uh, uh, on that flight tomorrow. I feel like God has called me to ministry. My mom said, thank God he got your attention. I've been fasting and praying and sowing extra in the offering. I said, my God, she could have just given it to me. Amen. <laughs> but I remember I was hanging out with my friends and I began to talk about purpose and I felt purpose coming alive. But it was all these steps, Bible school and all these steps that led up to me studying and showing myself approved and leaning into the presence of God that ultimately got me to this point. But I'll be honest, there was years and years and years that I felt like I was walking around with vague vision. I knew that I had a call. God had even downloaded some of the details, but I didn't have all of it together yet. So this weekend, our prayer so we can align our lives and fix our focus so that we can ultimately find and discover God's vision. God wants us to connect with his vision for our lives. And then our part is we dream really big. Then he takes it from there, and then he does even more. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It'll be on the screens. I'm actually reading this out of the message this specific translation. It says, God can do anything. You know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. I love that. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. See, when God gives you his vision for your life, this is really important. It's really important when God downloads his vision. I remember all of the outside voices telling me, you're missing God. No, you need to go do this instead. No, you should probably do this. I don't see that on you. When God gave me a vision, I remember a father in the faith said, you need to guard your heart. You need to guard your gates. You need to guard what's coming in your ears, what you're allowing in your eyes. You need to guard your mind and be careful what you allow and who you allow access to in your life. Here's the truth. Never respond, I'm gonna help somebody this morning, never respond to shade from trees that don't bear any fruit. Let, let me say it this way, don't pay attention to those who are critical and judgmental of your life when their own lives aren't bearing much fruit. Because the enemy will bring people along. This is the truth. If God wants to make a move, he uses people. If the enemy wants to destroy a move, he uses people. The enemy will send people across your path to rob you of the vision that God has in your life. I'm preaching. I'm telling you, I'm not, I feel like Mike Todd up here. <laughs> because the truth is, some people will visit your past more than you do. But you have to remind them, I don't live there anymore. I'm moving forward. Come on, shout out loud. I'm moving. I'm moving forward. 
I'm not stuck back here any longer. I'm moving forward because vision is the ability to see beyond where we are to where we are going. Because right now, you know where you're at, but the faith that comes along with vision lets you know where you're going. I was driving on West Park Tollway, and I think one of my kids, I don't know if it was my oldest or my oldest daughter, but we were driving, and it was wild. It felt like end of days, uh, this, this abyss, this fog just settled just on what felt like about a six-mile stretch. People put their emergency flashers on, came almost to a complete stop, and I'm like, no, no, don't get stuck here. Don't get stuck. There's more if you'll just keep moving forward. But the truth is, it was a it, it was a little unsettling. You couldn't see 15, 20 feet in front of you. So everybody had slowed down and we were driving. A guy pulled off to the side of the road, had his emergency flashers on. He's like, I don't know. But see, I was taught by my first pastor that if you're going through hell, don't stay there. Don't stay there. If something is trying to settle in on you that's not of God, don't sit in it. Keep moving forward. So what did I, what did I do? I started looking at the GPS. See, in the spirit, that's the God positioning system. That's super cheesy. That's really cheesy. I don't think I'm going to do that the next service. <laughs> but I remember, I can't remember if it was my daughter, Finley, or Brecken, but they were like, where, where are we going? And I said, right here. Look right here. Look at the map. We're not stuck. We're not trapped. No, if you'll just look a little bit further where the red is, it starts getting yellow, and now it's green, and we're going to be able to, and within three or four minutes, we were out of it, and everybody that stayed back there and stayed on the side of the road, they stayed stuck. Come on, somebody say out loud, I'm going to keep moving forward. Come on. Because vision is the ability to see, see what will be, not just what is. That GPS showed me what was coming, not what I was just in the middle of. The other thing vision does is, it enables us to be able to see the invisible. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 18 says, We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I said this a moment ago, but all of us have a call, an assignment, a plan, a purpose, and God has a vision for your life. But the truth is, we only have so many days on this planet to fulfill that call. That's why it's so important to lean in and know, God, what is the vision you have for my life? Let me ask you this loaded question. Is your life making an impact? I'm not talking about massive platform impact, but have you talked to your coworker about Jesus lately? Have you told your waitress or your waiter that to be encouraged? Like, is your life making an impact? And my prayer this weekend is that we'll just continue to grow together. If you're taking down notes, write this down. Vision is the bridge between now and the future. It's the bridge. It's the bridge between the current place you're in and the future where God is taking you because without vision, a lot of times people will just take the easy road. Oftentimes, those without vision spend their lives taking the path of least resistance because we all, I think we can all, I'm not gonna ask you to lift your hand, but we all try to avoid discomfort. Right? Okay, I'm going to ask, right? <laughs> Oftentimes, though, we feel like that uncomfortable. Like, yeah, but Daniel, you don't understand. It's just so uncomfortable. It's so painful. I'd rather not take that road. But vision oftentime, oftentimes gives pain purpose. Vision oftentimes gives pain purpose. The level of sacrifice that vision requires will determine the size of people who will follow. So for us, Jackie and I, as we've leaned in, we've recognized the sacrifice separates the small from the great. And as you abide in the presence of God, you'll recognize without vision, people just avoid discomfort. But the truth is, we've seen this so many times. Vision, write this down, requires sacrifice. It does. It will require sacrifice. Many times you go through life not understanding the purpose of the obstacles you face. How many of y'all been through some stuff and you're like, I didn't fully understand it. Amen. It's okay. A guy in the back has two hands and a foot lifted. He's like, no, a lot of times we go through life not understanding the obstacles that we face. And then we end up believing that every obstacle during our journey is a problem to be avoided. Obstacles are not always avoidable. Jesus himself said in John 16, 33, you know the Spurs, the Amplified says, I've told you these things that in me, you'll have perfect peace. Because in this world, it just kind of keeps on going. You'll have tribulation and 
distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world, and it says my conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. You know what I love about this is we get to walk in the same victory. Come on, somebody. We can walk in the same freedom that Jesus did because the Bible says in Galatians 2 verse 20 that when you commit your life to Jesus, not religion, but relationship, this is what happens. It's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. This life that I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Y'all, we can walk in victory and freedom and go through situations with joy. Come on, everybody put a big smile on your face. Go through situations with joy. Go through those obstacles shouting from the rooftops. I might be down, but I'm not out. And I have great faith that if God did it before, he'll show up and do it again. He rescued me. He's healed me. He's fought for me. He'll keep on fighting for me again. Why? Because Christ dwells in me. So again, we can spend our days wandering and try to avoid every obstacle in the road. And the humanity in us wants to go back to where it's comfortable and easier and convenient. And God, all throughout the word, is instructing us, keep moving forward. That's why it's so imperative that when you're going through things or life happens or you just wake up and take a breath and you're like, all right, I'm gonna take on this day, it's imperative to have the word of God hidden in your heart. I've said this before, when you're squeezed in life, what comes out of you is what's hidden inside of you. So it's imperative to have the word of God hidden in your heart. Psalms 119, 105 says, by your words, I can see where I'm going. That's a GPS. They throw a beam of light on my dark path. I've committed myself and I'll never turn back. That's a good word. See, a lot of times you can see from on top of the mountain, but real vision comes from spending time in the valley. God downloaded so many truths to me When Jackie was in emergency surgery, what I ended up finding out in the aftermath was a life-saving surgery. But I remember being in that valley, sitting in that lobby, crying out to God, asking him to intervene and show up. And I felt, God, this is the best moment for you to have a providence moment. A providence moment means an intervention. This would be an amazing moment. And we all love the mountaintop moments. But I'm telling you, so much vision came in that valley moment. Because God will actually use situations and obstacles and valley moments in our lives to stretch us and grow our faith to another level. Say another level. I've used this uh, illustration before, but we have a drawer at home. How many of y'all have a catch, catch-all drawer? Like there's jelly, jelly belly beans in there and keys. You're like, what do these keys go to? Lockbox with a lot of money in it? What is this? But we got that catch-all drawer with some random rubber bands. You know a rubber band is only valuable when it's stretched. I've done a whole sermon on this before. A rubber band is useless just sitting alone in a drawer. Like, no, come on, stretch me. <laughs> no, a rubber band is only valuable when it's, when it's stretched. Now, the stretching is uncomfortable. Those obstacles, those valley moments, those storm situations, those are uncomfortable. But if you'll allow God to grow you in the valley... That stretching is not designed to break you. That stretching is actually going to be like a slingshot ready to launch you and propel you. The other thing about the physics, so Pastor Oreck did our transition hosting, and he's brilliant. He has the highest IQ in the room. Uh, I I promise you it's more than yours. Uh, He's amazing. And one day he said to me, he said, Pastor Daniel, did you know that the physics behind the rubber band? I was like, oh, I love this. This is where we're going to get a lot deeper. He said, the physics behind that rubber band, when you stretch it to the naked eye, it looks like it goes back to the original design. But the physics behind that stretching is it actually never, ever can go back to the original size. So when God begins to stretch you, there's growth. When he begins to stretch you, he adds wisdom in there and clarity in there and peace in there and boldness in there and fight in there and perseverance in there and crazy faith in there. That stretching is actually designed to grow us. Then we read the Bible and we see things like James chapter 1. Verse two through four, this is Jesus' brother James. He says, my friends, it started kind of, kind of kind. Be glad, even if you have a lot of trouble. You're like, oh, come on, James. Verse three, you know you learn to endure by having your faith tested. 
That's that stretching. Verse four, but you must learn to endure everything so you will be completely mature and lacking in nothing. I love this verse because it's describing how we can grow, how growing in mature faith is so key and significant because the truth is nowadays, how many of y'all like instant access? Like you're like, I could throw that in the uh, air fryer, I could just pop it in the microwave. <laughs> we love instant access. Everything is instant access nowadays. But one thing that you can't microwave is spiritual maturity. You can't microwave spiritual maturity. See, there's a difference, and, and, and there's a difference being around uh, uh, someone who's been through something. Uh, you ever been around somebody and you can tell they've been through something just by the way they worship? You're like, like you are my champion, and the person next to you is like, you better make room because as soon as we get to that bridge, I'm throwing my arms up, I'll bow you in the neck because you don't know what I've been through. You can tell somebody that didn't have a microwaved maturity moment. They had a, in the valley, I've endured, I made it through, I, I'm still standing. You can tell, you can tell the difference. That's why I always say, don't judge somebody's passion until you know their past. I love the different expressions of worship in our in our church across all of our locations. You're gonna have people jumping, you're gonna have people lifting their hands, you're gonna have people shouting, you're gonna have people singing loud that can't sing on key at all. I love it. But never judge someone's passion until you know their past. Like James described when you've been through some things, you've grown in faith and you've learned to endure and you've realized, whoa, whoa, even in the valley moment, God, you have been there and your presence has been with me all along. When that husband ran out, God's presence was with you. When that wife abandoned, God's presence was with you. When you didn't have a mom or a dad figure in your life, God's presence was with you. When that bankruptcy seemed overwhelming, God's presence was with you. When that diagnosis seemed like you were overwhelmed and couldn't handle it, God's presence was with you. And we're a church that believes that God is fighting for us, that he is our healer, that he is our deliverer that he is our very present help in a time of need, our refuge and our strength. Come on, if you believe it, shout amen. Come on. Yeah. All right, write this, uh, this other one down. Vision, this is key. Vision will reveal the truth. This is, this is a big deal. Vision will reveal the truth. Vision is like a lens that interprets the events of your life. Our minds receive images from our eyes, but our heart actually interprets the images. Jesus said that our eyes are the windows of our heart. Paul prayed in Ephesians 1.18 that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you to. In other words, we perceive with our eyes, but we see with our hearts. Watch this though. So if our hearts, and maybe you can relate to this, maybe you know someone like this, maybe they're sitting next to you, don't look at them. Maybe you are dealing with this. If you're, the lens of your heart gets distorted, you'll start getting bitter. You'll start getting jealous. If something has hurt you or some way infected you. The lens of your heart ends up distorted and it will ultimately rob you of God's vision for your life because what we perceive is happening and what is really going on could be two completely different things. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth. Vision will unlock truth in your life. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. When you view life through a distorted lens, it can feel and look real, even make perfect sense and not be real at all. That's why it's important to have vision. Have you ever watched a movie and you've gotten so caught up in the movie, you experience all the feels and emotions in the movie that you leave the theater like still feeling the movie? Like if it's an action movie, you're like, let's go. I think I can climb this building. You're like, you're not Spider-Man. <laughs> no, I bet you I can climb this building right here. Like, calm down. <laughs> like, or, or have you ever had a dream and you wake up mad at the person that was in the, the dream? I'm like, what's the matter with you? She'd be like, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> like what? She's like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to you about how you talked to me in the dream. <laughs> like, you're mad at somebody all day. Like, you broke my iPad. You're like, I don't even know you. Like. <laughs> But the truth is, that those moments feel so real, and a lot of times when we go through this distorted lens phase, it was never real. The truth is, we see what we perceive to be true. Another way to put it is, if you have the wrong pretext, you will misunderstand the context. Right. Having a revelation of what is real will deliver us from a distorted perspective. Look at the person next to you and say, open up your eyes. Come on, open up your eyes. So again, vision reveals the truth. 
This one I love. Vision, write this down, will require great faith. We're a church of people that believe with great faith. Audacious faith. That if God said it, he'll do it. That his promises are yes and amen. That God's promises don't have expiration dates on them. That God's promises don't break when you lean on them. We're a church with big vision, but we know that it requires great faith. We talked earlier about how vision and faith work together. And all throughout the Bible, you see where God used great men and women with great faith. He gave them vision, and they had to have great faith to fulfill the vision. David prayed in Psalms 18 to the Lord and asked God to make him victorious against his enemies. Psalms 18, 32. He is the God, this is David's words, who makes me strong who makes my, I love this part, pathway safe. Vision requires great faith. As we bring 2022 in for a close and we lean into what God is asking us to be and become in 23, maybe you would say, well, Daniel, here's the truth. It's December. For some of you, it's been the longest year of your life. For others, you're like, poof, it's December. Like, well, I already have to buy Christmas. How many of y'all have already started Christmas shopping? Okay, praise God. How many of y'all finished your Christmas shopping? All right, I'm gonna hire you to help us with some Christmas shopping. But like, I saw, it's upon me, it's December now. But maybe you're here and you're like, Daniel, the truth is I've been playing it safe all year long. I've, I've been afraid because of what happened in 2020 and I barely got my footing in 21 and 22 has just felt like a, a blink of the eye. And the truth is I've been playing it safe. Maybe God asked you to start a business and you were playing it safe. Maybe God asked you to step out of your comfort zone and dream bigger. Step up in faith. Maybe God's asked you to step up in faith with your generosity or your compassion towards others. Maybe God's been stirring in you for years to go on a missions trip and be a part of what God is doing here through outreach and missions. And you're like, ah, I've been playing it safe. And God's asking us, I believe, as we close out 2022 and we lean into 2023, he's asking us to dream bigger with audacious faith. So I'm asking you this question. What is God asking of you? My friend Tim Ross did an illustration that I love. He talked about how God just wants us to take a step. He said, sometimes our step, because we're bold, is like, God, I can do, I can do this. But he said, other times, our step of faith looks like this. And he said, either way, God's looking down from heaven and saying, hey, 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 she took a step. Hey, look, 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 my boy took his step. Because God is not worried about the distance. He's concerned more with the heart of obedience. So what is God asking you to do? What kind of big faith step or step is he asking you to do? Because if God assigned you, he also has equipped you. If God has placed vision and purpose and a call on your life and he has assigned it to you, then I'm telling you internally, Faith will unlock it because he's already equipped you. Come on, somebody say amen again. I'm I'm preaching better than y'all are responding. Amen, I feel it. All right, write this down. Vision will empower you. This is huge to overcome fear. Some of y'all, this is a heavy one. Vision will empower you to overcome fear because fear tolerated will contaminate your faith. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Jeremiah wrote in the book of Lamentations, out of a place of complete distress and desperation. Lamentations chapter three, verse 57. If you read this whole story, it says, you came near when I called you. And you said, thank God for his promises. You said, do not fear. David said in Psalms 34, verse four, I prayed to the Lord. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and he freed me from all my fears. Again, God as he places that vision in your life, will empower you to overcome fear. And when God gives you a God-sized, faith-filled vision without fear, the enemy knows you're dangerous. The enemy's gonna wanna try to attack that vision. The enemy's gonna know that there's healing in your hands. Again, knowing that people's lives are connected to your purpose. But we have to recognize the authority that we have. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, I have authority. Come on, let them know, say, I have authority. The enemy knows that we have authority to resist him, and he has to leave. James 4, 7 says it this way. See, when we apply that vision, that God vision to our life, and we begin to step into a position of overcoming fear, it also unlocks courage and fight and boldness. Watch this. So submit to the authority of God that's in relationship and resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he might leave you alone. 
It, it doesn't. He potentially will not bother you every other Wednesday. Some of you are like, is he reading out the Book of Mormon? What are we talking about right now? I'm going to get a DM from that. I know I am. <laughs> if you have a Book of Mormon, we'll swap it out for a real Bible at the end of this. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm still going. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. You probably like decaf coffee too. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. Stand firm and he, what? Will flee from you. That's it. I can't. I can't use your words. You have to speak as a daughter and a son. No, no, no. I am a daughter of the most high God. I am a son of the living God. Hey, devil, you can't mess with my family anymore. You've been running around messing with my marriage, my family, my kids. I have, somebody shout it out. I have the authority from Jesus to resist the devil and he will flee. Come on, somebody say, not today, devil. Come on, shout it out. This is the last one as we land the plane. Vision will require goals. It requires goals. So important to write down goals as you close out 2022. Write down your goals as you enter 2023. Goals are the vision broken down into pieces that can be measured. But statistically, people don't like goals. Why? Because what if I don't reach my goal? What if I don't accomplish them on time? Then I feel like a failure. I feel like that I've failed. But I want you to hear this. The truth of the matter is, if you fail to plan, you'll plan to fail. If you, I'll say it again. If you fail to plan, then you might as well plan on failing. As you step into 23, that's why we have goals. Some of them are pretty audacious. I love my, my, my friend Mike Todd preaches about crazy faith. And people are like, I don't know about all this. No, no, no. It's only crazy until it happens. At one of our freedom conferences, I remember a lady came up to me. We had done a worship moment, and I was praying, and we were declaring life into the room. And I said, there's somebody in here, and you're dealing with a kidney problem. And, and we were praying and praying. Somebody in here, and you've been asking God for healing from a, a liver condition. And somebody in here, you're dealing with lupus. And I'm just, we're just praying. And it was this moment, and we get done with it. And people are like, man, I felt the spirit of God in the room. This girl comes up afterwards and says, I need to talk to you. She said, I have kidney failure. They told me I need a kidney transplant, my liver is failing, and it's all because I've had lupus since I was 12. You said all three in a row. She said, I have a follow-up appointment on Tuesday. Can you pray with me? She's on our dream team. She went on that following Tuesday. They came back and said, hey, we don't even know why they sent you here to the kidney specialist. Your kidneys are functioning completely normal. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, and by the way, the next appointment confirmed there was nothing wrong with her liver. And by the way, there was no evidence that she ever had lupus a day in her life. Y'all, we serve a big God. So some of these goals might be a miracle in my physical body. Some of these goals might be, I need a breakthrough in my family, my marriage. I want to be free of this addiction. But if you fail to plan, you might as well plan on failing. Proverbs 16, 9 says, in their hearts, humans will plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Y'all, God loves the intricacies of our lives. And he takes care of those who are in relationship with him because, again, not religion, but relationship. Psalms 37, 23, David said, the Lord directs the steps of the godly and he delights. I can almost see him like I was yesterday, my daughter, Daphne, she lost her first tooth and she bit into an apple and she came over and she's like, dad, dad. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, come out. And I was like, oh Lord, like this tooth was just kind of, and I said, wait, let me see what's going on. And I literally reached in and pulled it and put it in my pocket before she even knew it, like a magician. And then you know how like illusionists, they're always out of breath after they do a trick. I was like, <sighs> anyways, I didn't really do that. But I remember we were, we were standing there and we went into the kitchen and she showed her mom and said, look, mom, look, mom, look, I lost my first tooth. And the sheer delight on Jackie and my face, David said that God delights in every detail of your life. Every detail. The things that you're hiding, the things that you feel ashamed of, the things that you feel like you've lost hope in, the things that you feel like you're winning in. He cares about every detail of your life. We do our part because vision requires goals. Let me say this as bold, as bold but also as grace-filled as I can. 
Don't ask God to direct your steps if you're not willing to move your feet. Some of you are stuck because you haven't even taken this. Because you've only ever seen people do this. And God's saying, hey, hey, hey. Hey, Jessica, hey. Hey, Kevin, hey. If you'll just, if you'll just do that, I'll meet you where you're at. So vision requires goals. I've realized that my purpose from God, because it's a God purpose and a God vision, his purpose is downloaded in me when I was young and I've realized my purpose from God is bigger than me so I'm obligated to move differently. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So shifting gears as we're bringing in for a landing, God's vision for our church is so big that it's gonna take his mighty power and all of us to accomplish the assignment on this place. Fresh vision for today as we end out 2022 strong. We've got this whole month, but it'll come to an end quick and then we start 2023, year number eight. We're a church, for those of you who are new or those of you who just need to hear it again, we're a church that worships God every day of the week, not just on Sundays. We're a church that's filled with worshipers. We're a church that's sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're a church that's committed to personal spiritual growth. That's why we give you the first 20 challenge every day. First five minutes in the word, five minutes in prayer, five minutes in worship, then five minutes of simply remembering all that God has done for you and then applying it. We also have some amazing plans across all of our locations to go deeper in discipleship in 2023. Get ready. It's going to be next level. We're a church that believes in community. That's why we're passionate about groups. We're a church that's large enough to serve and make an impact in a city, but small enough to do life together in groups. We're a church that equips people to know Jesus where they're at. Because we know that he'll meet you where you are, whether you're brand new to the faith, whether you're gonna commit your life to Jesus today for the first time, or you're a seasoned saint, you're like, I've walked with the Lord for 87 years. Well, praise God. We are a church committed to equip you to live for Jesus where you are. We're a church that demonstrates compassion towards those who are in need. That's why we're really passionate about Hope City Missions and Outreach. Anthony and Michelle Miner have been leading so strong, and then we brought Pastor Brandon and Kristen Barber on to oversight our community uh, efforts and needs, and I'm telling you what God has done is supernatural. I need you to shout as I give these stats. This year, partnering with uh, Mike Barber Ministries and what we do in our church through prison ministry, we've reached 20,000 men and women in prisons. Watch this, and 11,000 of them lifted their hand and said yes to Jesus this year, 11,000. We provided 318,200 meals to people in need throughout the nation and all throughout disaster relief. This Christmas, you've heard us talking about it, we're partnering with four schools and seven different organizations to reach 10,000 children and families with toys this year for our hope for Christmas so that people can experience Jesus. We're committed to demonstrate compassion to those that are hurting. We're committed to tell others about Jesus outside of the four walls, not just from a microphone on a Sunday morning or even in a connect group, but outside the four walls where we're evangelizing and telling people about Jesus. And y'all, we're a church that's committed to generosity. You're a generous church. Thank you for recognizing that you can't do everything. I can't do everything. But we're a church that recognizes that we can make a sizable impact in our city, our nation, and the world because when we do it together, we are not called to do everything, but we are all called to do something. My final verse of the weekend, Proverbs 29. Y'all getting anything out of this today? I preached myself happy. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, people are unrestrained, just kind of out of control, vague, no word. They don't know what's, what's next. They end up double-minded, blowing with wherever the wind takes them. But happy and blessed is he it's us who keeps the law or the commandments of God. We're an obedient church who leans in and listens to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Close your eyes for just a moment. If you're here today and you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I am struggling with vision. That whole illustration of super big jumps versus the little step, that's me. Today, I want to take the first step. I just want to take a little step because I want God to unlock his vision for my life. 
The reality is here at Hope City, we believe that when you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose. That's part of that step. The gift and call of God that's on your life, that vision that he has for your life, that incredible assignment he has for your life. You can discover your purpose and make a difference. There's room for you here at Hope City. There's room for you to step into Finding a community that will lift your arms and say, I'm backing you in faith that that business is gonna get started. I'm backing you in faith and believing that your family will be restored. I'm backing you in faith and believing that addiction is gonna break off of that family member or your own life. We're a church with big vision because we are leaning in and listening to God's vision for our house. But if you're here today and you say, Daniel, the truth is I've been struggling with vision. If that's you, would you lift up your hand? You're talking about me, you're talking about me. I've needed, okay, God, I pray that you would meet every person right now that says, I've, I'm, I've got vague vision or cloudy vision, or I just, I feel like I'm stuck in a rut. God, look at all, meet them where they're at right now. You can put your hands down. God, I pray today that you would begin to download, lead somebody across their path. Let today be a reminder and a wake up call, but a reminder that, hey, I see you. That you, God, are looking down saying, hey, daughter, I see you. Hey, hey, my boy, I see you. And God, today, as we follow through and apply these principles, at the end of this year, write down our goals. I cannot wait to see what you do as we unlock crazy faith in this house. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, say amen. Yes.